Namaste, welcome. Hello, everyone. Here we are, right before Christmas. Very exciting. It's the holiday season. So it's the time to be joyful. Here we are, joyful on our yoga mat, the magical yoga mat. So we are going to begin our yoga session. So sit comfortably. And remember, this is your selfie time. That means it's your time. So leave all your thoughts, worries, anxieties, all of that outside when you step on this magical mat. So let's begin. Keep your spine upright and straight. Keep your shoulders rounded back. And... Take a deep breath in, inhale, and as you breathe in, lift your arms up, bring your hands over your head, put them together, hold it here, stretch your arms. So if your elbows are bent, slowly you can extend your elbows. Feel that stretch, and then bring your hands down, bring the elbows together, hold it here. And relax your elbows, bring your hands to your heart center. Very good. And now we're going to do these warm-up exercises which will open up. They will wake our sleeping muscles and ligaments. So you're going to lift your right hand up, put your left hand on the floor, for support and you're going to bend to the left side leaning on the left side keeping your arms stretched five four three two one and relax bring your hand down catch your breath and now we'll do the same thing on the other side so you're going to lift your left arm up right hand on the floor and lean to the right side. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Bring your hands down, catch your breath, and now we'll do the, the rolling around with our belly. So what you're going to do is churning your upper torso. So we have done that before. Both your hands will rest on your knees, holding your knees tightly. And that's the leverage. And then you're going to lean to the left side. So you're bending to the left. Feel that full stretch to the left. Then lean forward to the right side. And back to the left again. So this is how we are doing the churning with the upper torso to the left and back last round to the to the left see that full stretch then front to the right now you will see this full stretch of your left arm back and relax now do it in the opposite direction we will do three rounds clockwise three rounds counterclockwise uh, and you can feel the stretch. And if you do it with your eyes closed, you can even feel the part of the body you are working on. And relax when you finish your three rounds. Very good. So these are some of the seated yoga postures that we are doing. You can even relax the, the legs a little bit. And we are going to now slowly put both our hands in the front and walk your hands forward as far back, as far away from the body as you can and slowly lean forward. And if you need to, you can even bring your head down or you can keep your head up, whatever is comfortable. Feel that stretch on your spine. It's a wonderful stretch for your entire upper back and your lower back and now slowly walk your hands back towards the body slowly very good so that is uh, the front forward bend and now curl your belly in and drop your head down so you're holding your belly tight 
and your shoulders are stooping and you're dropping your head and then relax and push your chest forward and you can even tilt your head back. This is like the cat cow pose we do again slowly belly in dropping your head down feel that on your belly as you drop your shoulders down and then relax. Bending your chest, like pushing your chest forward, bending your head back. Ah, oh, it feels so good. One last time. So you're going to breathe in. So you're inhaling, holding the belly in, dropping your head down and your shoulders are drooping forward and your back is arched and as you exhale ah uh, it feels so good push your chest forward tilt your head back and relax wow i can already feel it on my back now you're going to take your hands behind hold your left wrist with your right hand and so as you can see it, you should be able to see. So what you're doing is like this. So you're holding the left wrist with your right hand. And then you're going to push your, your shoulders back as if they're trying to reach each other. So you're going to push it back. Oh, it feels so good on your shoulder blades. You should feel it in your shoulder blades. Okay, I'm pushing on that part. So we have some plumbing issue going on right now. There's a, um, and relax your shoulder blades. Okay, very good. Now, so that was for the shoulder blades. Very good. Interlace your hands and stretch your arms forward. So extend it, stretch your arms. Yes, very good. Stretch it. Yes. Yeah. If that's your comfort level, you stay there and then bring it towards your chest. One more time, breathe in and breathe out and relax. Very good. So now let's get on our four limbs and this is our tabletop position. These are all relaxing poses and we need to relax. This is, you know, the joyful season. It is the season to be joy. So we are all going to be relaxed and this is part of these relaxing postures. So during the holiday season, if you feel you're getting a bit uptight or you're getting a bit antsy or stressed, do these relaxing poses. So again, you're going to lift your right leg at the level of your vertebral column and look forward feel that balance of the body if you want you can even lift your left arm up at the shoulder level balancing the body and then bring your hand down bring your leg down and relax catch your breath now we'll do the other hand, other leg so breathe in and lift your left arm at the level of your vertical column again Feel that stretch. Keep your body balanced on your right knee and your, uh, your two hands. And then when you are ready and you think you can lift your right arm, so you can lift your right arm. So always we are doing the carry corner from the leg. So if it's left leg up, you do the right arm stretch. When the right leg is up, you do the left arm stretch. Then bring it down, bring your leg down. And bring your right foot towards your right hand, your left foot towards the left hand, and slide your hands up your body and relax and stand up. So now we are going to do the standing postures. So in these few minutes that we are together for this, uh, this time, we do about 50 yoga asanas. That's quite a lot. And that is the entire range of, you know, if you include all the, the, the movements, the postures, prone position, supine position, balancing postures, all of that 
it's like 50 postures and you don't realize it. You just go from, you know, we keep sliding one from the one and then next and the next before you know, you're just feeling so relaxed and good and the session is over. So standing postures, let's do our hand stretch breathing. So bring both your arms to the front. Now breathe in and, and extend your arms and you can even tilt your head back and breathe out, bring your hands to the front. Again, we'll do one more round, take a deep breath in, opening your arms wide, pushing your chest forward, tilting your head back, and breathe out, bring your hands to the front, and drop your hands down, relax. Let's do our 45 degree angle, uh, hand, uh, hand stretch breathing. So you're going to interlace your hands, flip them and lift it at 45 degrees angle. Hold it here, feel the full stretch. And as you exhale, bring it towards your chest. Let's do it one more time. Hand stretch breathing, breathe in, flipping your hands. Stretching your arms at 45 degrees angle, hold it here and breathe out and bring it back towards your chest. Now relax, let go, very good. And now we'll take our hands over our head. So you're going to, again, interlacing your fingers, flipping your hands, lift your arms above your head, hold it here, feel that full stretch. Feel the extension of your spine. Your, your body is fully stretched from the heels to your hands. And then relax, bring your hands behind your head. And now bring your elbows a little bit towards each other. And open your elbows. We'll do it one more time in. And out and relax. Bring your hands down, shake it, catch your breath. Very good. So those are some of the hand stretch breathing that we do. And now we'll do our standing postures. Let's start with our trikonas. And remember, a triangle a day keeps the doctor away. Why? Because it works on our abdominal organs. This triangle posture is really uh, a must in a yoga routine. So we always do that because it provides pressure to our intestines, spleen, liver, pancreas, spleen, all the abdominal organs. You're going to stretch your arms at the shoulder level, turn your right hand to the right, looking on the right hand side, breathe in. And as you breathe out, you're going to bend your right knee, rest your left arm, your, left, uh, your right elbow on your right thigh. Your left hand is pointing up towards the ceiling. And you can stay here. This is one of the variation of Trikon Asan, triangle pose. And you want to take it a notch further. Then you can straighten your right leg, slide your right hand down towards your ankle. And you can hold your ankle and your left hand is pointing to the ceiling and you can tilt your head towards the ceiling. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Bring your arms at the shoulder level, drop them down, shake it, catch your breath. And now we'll do the same thing on the other side. So now you're going to stretch your arms at the shoulder level, Turn your left foot pointing to the left. Your right foot is still pointing forward. You're looking on the left side. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, you can bend your left knee and lift your right arm up. Your left elbow is sitting on your left thigh. Hold it here. And then if you want, you can even 
take it down to whatever level you are comfortable with. So always listen to your body. So five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Arms at the shoulder level, bring them down, point your left foot forward. Very good. So that was triangle pose, trikonasan. And now keep the distance between your legs and we will do the kati chakrasan, the waist rotation, which is a powerful asan for spinal twist. So you're going to bring your arms to the front and stretching and extending your arms. Your palms are facing each other. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, you're going to be bending, taking your arms all the way to the back. Keep your gaze parallel to your hands. And slowly, with the outgoing breath, bring your hands to the front. Breathe in, in the center. And breathe out to the other side. And now, slowly. Come back to the center. Let's do one more round and do it at your own pace. So with your in breath, you're moving your hands and taking them to the back. With your out breath, you're bringing them back to the front. So we coordinate the movements with our breathing. And when you finish your round, relax. Catch your breath, very good. And now let's do the, the forward bend and back bend. Now remember that if you have severe back problem, do not do forward bend. And if you have hernia, do not do back bend. So with that, breathe in, lift your arms up, tilt your head back, your belly back, and breathe out. And you can bend forward. Touch the ground, you can even take your fingers under your feet. And you can feel the stretch on your legs, also on your back, your arms. And slide your hands up your legs and relax. Very good. It's a powerful forward and back bend. So we try to include the entire range of motion, which includes forward bend, back bend, spinal twist, crisscross. cross. We also do balancing postures along with prone position, supine position posture. So the whole range, it's like, you know, all of those including will be about 50 hours in that we do. All right, so let's do the crisscross cross one. So spread your legs apart. So about Three feet apart with your right hand, bend down to reach your left foot, come back with your left hand, reach down towards your right foot. So just do it a few times at your own pace. And if you need to bend your, elbow, your knee, that's okay. And relax. When you finish your round, it feels so good when you're doing that crisscross. Wonderful. All right, so since this is the season to be jolly, let's do our laughter yoga. So we are going to do that. And so this is ho 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 time, ha 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 time. So you're going to bend forward and then throw your hands up and just have a loud hearty laugh. So let's begin, bend down and <laughs> Great, that is wonderful. So my 98 year old friend is laughing really loud there and she's continuing to smile. That's great, keep smiling through your life. All right, now we're going to sit down and we're going to do some Sukshma Vyayam, which is joint exercises. Now remember, this is this whole body is a joint family. There are so many joints. 
uh, we have over 360 joints in our in our body. So that is a large joint family right here. So let's begin paying attention to the members of our joint family. So stretch your legs, put your hands behind, keep your spine straight and pressing your kneecaps down. You know, so feel that stretch, press your kneecaps down, hold it tight, press the kneecaps down, feel the tightness in your quads, your hamstring, your thighs, just the kneecaps, yes and relax shake it now for the feet wiggle your toes in and out in and out in and out wiggle 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 and then and spread them see if you can spread your toes just your toes very good for our feet for our bones for the joints and now move your feet towards the body and away from the body, towards the body, away from the body. Last round. And then roll your feet around. So we know this movement, circular movement with our feet. And then do it in the opposite direction. So it will help with arthritis or other joint problems, especially in the winter. Sometimes the joints begin to act up. So we want to keep those joints healthy and happy. Now bring some distance between your feet and turn your feet towards each other as if you're holding an imaginary beach ball between your toes. Feel that angular movement and drop the ball. Very good. And now you're going to fold your left leg and stretching your right leg and bringing your right leg towards the body. So you're going to lift your left arm up and your right hand is walking down towards the right foot, holding your right toes if you can. Otherwise, just hold your knee or your shin, wherever your hand reaches. And you're going to be bending to the right side. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. And now fold your right leg, stretch your left leg. Very good. And so now with your left hand, you're going to walk towards your left toes, and then you're going to lift your right arm up, and reaching over your head, you're going to try to reach your, your left toe with your right hand. Wherever your body allows, you stay there. And then relax. Let go. Bring your legs to the center, stretch them. Now fold your right leg, lift it up and down, up. And down, very good. Last round. And then roll your lower half around. So you're rolling from the knee down. Three rounds, clockwise, three rounds. Slow and steady and mindfully, you're doing this. Three rounds, counterclockwise. Very good, then hold it. And just move the ankle now. So just your foot around, wonderful. And in the opposite direction. And this is how you are addressing all those joints. You're also addressing your bones. <clears throat> so again, now we are going to do it with the left leg. You're going to fold your left leg, lift it up and straighten it up and down, up and down. So we have over 206 bones. And we have, of course, cartilage and ligaments and all those muscles. Now move the lower half of the leg around. So you're working on all of them. So when you're doing these uh, postures and when you do this routine, you are addressing all the major joints of the body, all the major muscle groups of the body last round. Now just do the foot around, working on the ankle rotation and then to the opposite side. So just by following the routine, you're addressing these uh, 
you know, the body parts, your bones, joints, ligaments, tissues, muscle, relax. And now fold your legs, we'll do the butterfly pose. So folding the legs together, interlacing your fingers, bring your hands under your toes and, and flap your knees up and down like the wings of a butterfly. So what you will find initially, and if you haven't been doing yoga or this routine, you will notice that your knees are up here and that's fine because that's where we all started when we started doing this yoga practice about 12 years ago. And then slowly with practice, we notice that the knee, the hip joint that begins to relax. We don't even realize how it happened, but before you know, your knees will go all the way down, your calves, your legs will be touching the ground, and you can feel that stretch in your pelvic joint. You can feel it in your quads, in your hamstrings, and also your lower back. So it's your pelvic floor as well as all those joints and relax. Now we are going to bring our attention to joints in the upper body. So let's start with our arms. So stretch your arms, keep your spine straight and lift your hands up and straight and down. So we are doing this flexion, extension, hyperextension. And then alternately move your hands. Alternately, yes. And then make a fist with your thumb inside and move your fist in uh, down and up, down and up. Then you can turn it sideways and move your fist in and out, in and out. Last round, in and out. And move your, your fingers, feel that stretch, then make a tight fist, open and close. Flip your hands and touch your shoulders. Open and fold. Open and fold. Do it sideways. Open and fold. Very good. And drop your elbows down and roll your elbows around. Feel that stretch again. You know, different members of the joint family are feeling happy. Our nieces, nephews, nieces, uncles, ankles, all of them, we have already contacted them. They are happy. We got in touch with them. Now we are working on the shoulder blades. Now do it in the opposite direction. So the shoulder joint is another joint which is one of the most used joint in the body. And sometimes if you're not using the range of motion, we can have pinch nerve, rotator cuff problem. So in fact, you can just roll your shoulders around like this when you're sitting. So just slowly breathe in, moving your shoulders back, breathe out, moving it forward. So it's a circular motion. It's not just up and down motion. Then do it in the opposite direction again. Um, a circular motion. Last round. And relax. It feels wonderful when you do that. Let's do this. We haven't done this in a while. So you're going to do this. So you're going to stretch your arms, then cross them over, then interlace. So they're facing each other. Interlace those fingers together hands. Then you're going to drop your hand down and slowly bring it towards your chest and hold it here. And then slowly drop it down. And you're going to unlock your fingers and stretch your arms. Now we'll do it the other way. So now your left arm will go over your right arm. Your hands are now, the palms are now facing each other. Then you're going to slowly bring them together, interlace your fingers. Then you're going to drop it down and slowly bring it towards your heart. You're going to hold it here 
And then you're going to slowly lift your elbows. You're going to drop your hands down, stretch, unlock your fingers, stretching your arms, and let go. So sometimes when you do it too fast, then it's not clear what one is doing because you know you do it like this and this, then it's not very clear what one is doing. But it's quite simple when you do it slowly in steps. Very good. So now. Let's do Brahma Mudra for the neck joint. This also helps to massage our uh, vagus nerve. And vagus nerve is the connection between the brain and uh, the rest of the organs. And this has been like a hot topic of discussion and research lately because it also helps with the inner relaxation of the body because this is the connection between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system of the body. So um, the inner relaxation is critical. So that one is not so stressed, the inner chatter begins to subside and the vagus nerve plays a big role in that. So Brahma Mudra helps with that. It also helps with people who have problems with thyroid gland. So whether it's hypothyroid or hyperthyroid, over or under, it helps with that. So keep your spine straight, breathe in and drop your chin down. Your hands are in Jnana Mudra position, which is your index finger joined with your thumb tip. Feel the stretch on the back of your neck, then slowly lift your chin up and gently drop your head back. Keep your spine straight, feel the stretch on the front of your neck, then straightening your Head, you're going to tilt your head to the right and feel the stretch on the left side of your neck as your right ear close, is closer to your right shoulder and bring your head to the center, tilt your head to the left and now feel the stretch on the right side of your neck because now your left ear is closer to your left shoulder, bring your head to the center and turn your head to the right so your chin is parallel to your right shoulder and bring your head to the center and now move it towards the left side. So your chin is now parallel to your left shoulder. So it's a twisting and turning of the neck. Now bring your head to the center. Always do it while sitting down. And now you're going to drop your chin down and roll your head around very gently. So this is called Brahma Mudra. You are rolling your head around slowly and mindfully. And if you experience pain, that means you've gone too far. You need to cut back. That you're not listening to your body. So when you finish your two rounds in one direction, slowly do the opposite side, counterclockwise. Slowly, mindfully, very relaxing. It can bring an altered sense of consciousness and that's why it is recommended that you always do it while sitting down. You don't do it while standing up. All right, very good. Now we're going to turn sideways and we will continue doing the rest of the routine, which is our prone position and supine position postures along with yoga nidra. So turning sideways, we are going to first do Nauka Asana, boat pose. So keep your spine straight and you are sitting like a teddy bear with your arms parallel to your legs. Then you're going to lean back, lift your right leg up, Bring it down, lift your left leg up, bring it down. If you want, you can lift both your legs up. So your body is in the shape of a boat. Nauka, Nauka means boats. It's Nauka Asan. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. So you can now lie down on your back. And we are ready to do our supine postures. So in this position, 
When we are doing yoga, we are working on our gastrointestinal system, our digestive system, and it takes care of problems related to indigestion or constipation or irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, or flatulence. So here, let's start. This is our start position. Both arms next to the body, hands facing down. Now you're going to bend your legs, fold your legs, bringing your feet close to your hips. And we'll do knee chest pose. Pavan Mukta Asan. You're going to lift your folded legs, wrap your arms tightly around your legs and hold your legs tightly against your body. Feel the pressure on your lower belly when you're doing it. And that's why it is always recommended that you do yoga uh, after at least three hours or four hours of having eaten a meal. So there should be at least a three hour, three to four hour gap between a meal and your practice. Because you can see you're putting a lot of pressure on your belly. Then if you don't have cervical problems, you can lift your head, bring your head towards your knees and you can feel more pressure on your belly as you're doing it. And then relax and you can Rock your body side to side, working on the paraspinal muscles. You can even do front and back, like rocking your body and relax. Let go. Come back to start position. Catch your breath. Next, we will do the bicycle pose that is called Dui Chakrit Asana. So you're going to slide your hands under your hips to give a little extra push and edge to your uh, lower half of the body. Then you're going to fold your legs and then lift them and pretend you're riding an imaginary bicycle. So you're pedaling the wheels slowly and mindfully. Feel the full circle as you do, and then you do in the opposite direction, in the reverse gear. But don't do in a jerky manner. Do it very mindfully and slowly and relax. Keep your hands under your hips. We will do the Padvritta Karasan, the leg rotation. We'll do it with both legs, but if you're more comfortable doing one leg at a time, go ahead and do one leg at a time. So you're going to be lifting your legs up and moving them in a big circle. So try to keep your uh, knees straight, but if you need to bend, that is also okay. So we're doing it three rounds clockwise and three rounds counterclockwise. And it's okay if you lose your count, that's okay. Take one extra, two extra, whatever you're comfortable with. And when you finish your rounds, bring your legs down, keep your hands under your hips. Let's do the 30 degree, 45 degree, and 90 degree angle lift with our legs. So that is Padukhanasan at various angles. Breathe in, lift your legs at 30 degrees angle, hold it here, five, four, three, two, one, lift it further at 45 degrees angle, hold it here, five, four, three, two, one, and lift it at 90 degrees angle, hold it here, perpendicular to the body, five, four, three, two, one, come back to 45 degrees, five, four, three, Two, one, back to 30 degrees, five, four, three, two, one, and back to 180 degrees, straight line. And now you can relax, come back to start position. And now we will do the soup, the kapot asan, which is the pigeon pose. So you're going to fold your right leg. This is also called the chair position. So if the chair posture you're doing with your uh, back on the ground. So you will cross your left leg over your right leg as if you are sitting on a chair. Then with your both hands, you can push your right thigh, your left thigh away from the body. 
and then lift your right leg and hold your right thigh with both your hands and stay there and you can just gently try to push your right leg towards your body just a little bit and relax let go and now we'll do the same thing on the other side so now your right leg will cross over your left leg and sit on the left thigh and you're going to take both your hands and push your right thigh away from the body so just gently pushing it away from the body and then you're going to lift your left leg hold your left thigh with both your hands and you're going to now gently try to bring it towards your body and relax let go come back to start position catch your breath and next we are ready to do the monkey pose also called jaipur parivartanasan uh, or Markatasan. So you're going to spread your, leg, your arms at the shoulder level, fold both your legs, and then you're going to take a deep breath in and drop your knees to the right side and turn your head to the left side. And as you do that, you can feel the stretch on the left side of your lower back. It's a powerful posture. This also helps um, alleviate problems of pain with the lower back and relax. Bring your knees to the center, bring your head to the center, catch your breath, breathe in, and drop your knees to the left and turn your head to the right. And now you'll be able to feel it on the right side of your lower back. You can also feel it on your neck and slowly relax and straighten your legs, but keep your arms stretched. Let's do the angel pose that we haven't done in a while. An angel pose, this is the, the holiday season. So let's do that. Breathe in. And move your right leg towards your right hand. And then relax. If it is easier to do it with the folded left leg, you can do that. So fold your left leg first. Keep your right leg stretched. Breathe in. And slowly move your right leg towards your right hand. As you breathe out. Slowly move your leg back towards its position. All right, now we do the same thing on the other side. So you're going to be folding the other leg. So now let's do that. So now you're going to fold your right leg and your arms are stretched. So breathe in, moving your left leg towards your left hand. And breathe out, move it back towards its position. Let's do it one more time. So you're going to do breathe in, sliding your left leg towards the left hand and sliding it back to its position. Great. Uh, now we'll do the bridge pose. So come back to the start position and get ready to do inversion. Now, if you have any major cardiovascular issues or heart problems or uh, high blood pressure, you want to avoid doing this. Or if you're doing it, then do it at your comfort level, which means that you should not have shortness of breath when you're doing this. All right, so let's begin the Setu Bandh Asan bridge pose. You're going to fold your leg, bringing your heels close to your hips. Both your arms are alongside the body. You're going to press the hands and elbows down as you lift your pelvic floor up. Breathe in, pressing the hands down, lift your hips up. 
forming a bridge. So this is the setu. Setu means bridge. You can hold it here. You can even bring your feet closer. You can hold your ankles if you want as you lift your hips up and keep your hips tight. So pull them up further or you can just interlock your fingers and keep your hands on the ground. Or you can just keep them straight down, whatever is comfortable. Five, four, three, two, one, relax. Bring your hips down. Come back to start position. Catch your breath. We are finished doing all the asanas in the supine position. And then we are ready to do the prone position. So for prone position, you're going to roll over and on your belly. Again, if you have major heart issues and if you have major um, um, high blood pressure or cardiovascular issues, then you can skip doing the prone position posture. Because you're putting more pressure uh, because you're on your belly, it can be uncomfortable and you put more pressure on the heart. So here we are. So this is our prone position. And the postures are geared for our spine and our vertebral column and our intervertebral disc. So it keeps the back healthy. So you're going to lie down on your belly with your forehead on the ground and both your hands next to your ears. So this is our start position and feet together and toes pointing away from the body. So let's start with the Makarasan to bring so separate your feet, bring a distance of about two feet between your legs and then pressing the hands down, lift your upper body and then bring your elbows in front and rest your chin on your hands and alternately you can move your feet towards your hips. And if you need to bring your feet close, you can do that and then move your heels towards your hips, whatever is comfortable. And then you can do it with both the feet towards the hips together. And you can even lift your pelvic floor when you are doing it. And relax your back in the start position, catching your breath. We'll do Cobra pose, Bhujangasana next. So again, bring distance between, again, two feet distance between your feet, pressing the hands down, spread your fingers, press the hands down and lift your upper body. And you can look straight ahead or you can tilt your head further. In fact, as you're tilting your head back to look up towards the ceiling, you can feel your neck is stretched. It also works not only towards your, um, vertebral column, but it also works on your thyroid as you are stretching the neck. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Slowly come down to start position, catch your breath, slide your hands under your thighs now. So your right hand under the right thigh, left hand under the left thigh, and we will do the Shalabhasan, locust pose. So your head is resting, forehead is resting on the mat. You are going to lift both your legs, or you can do one leg at a time, whatever is comfortable. And you can even lift your head if you want. So both the ends of the body, top and bottom, are lifted up. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Let go. And catch your breath. And now, slowly pressing the hands down, you can again bring your hips down towards your feet and stretch your arms away from the body. You are in a child pose called Balasana. Very relaxing. And then you can sit up. 
So we are doing very well with our time and our sequence of the asanas and we are making sure that we are including the entire range of motion um, that is the nourishment for the joints and for the muscles. So now we are going to do pranayam. So that is like the flossing of the brain using our breath. So what we did so far was the taking care of the infrastructure, the body, the physical structure of the body. Now we are going to take care of the mental health. So there's physical health and mental health. Because the mind is directly related to our breath. Mind and breath are two sides of the same point. So keep your spine straight. You can sit against a wall or uh, on a chair. And your shoulders are straight. You're not drooping your shoulders. You're not slouching. And your hands are in Gyan Mudra position, the index fingertip joined with your thumb. Resting and take a deep breath and keep your chin parallel to the ground. And it helps if you close your eyes because you can zoom in on your breath. You can focus on the breath. So breathe in. And we are breathing through the nose unless you have a medical condition that prevents you from breathing through the nose. Um, or you're breathing through the mouth. So again, let's just focus on the breath. An extended in-breath and an extended out-breath. So we are breathing in and out through the nose. An extended in-breath, feel that. Going through the nostrils, going through the trachea, into your lungs. And as you exhale, it leaves your lungs and through the trachea, it then slowly comes to the nostril and leaves the nostrils. As you breathe in, you will notice your belly rising. That is abdominal breathing because the diaphragm is dropping down. And as you breathe out, your belly is falling because the diaphragm is pushing the lungs to exhale. So it's a extended in breath and an extended out breath. What we are working on is the Bhastrika Pranayam, the basic Bhastrika Pranayam. It is slow, steady, deep breathing. And the main element we are working on is for prana. Prana is the vital life force that sustains us. So prana shakti gets activated when you're doing this. And you feel more energized when you do deep breathing. And with deep breathing, it also helps to release endorphins, body's natural painkillers, and those hormones help to relieve pain. And that's why you will notice that if you were feeling any aches or pains at the start of the session, you will notice that now towards the end of the session, your aches and pains have disappeared or they have minimized. And relax. So if you do it for three to five minutes daily, either in the morning or evening, or when you're comfortable, you will see a tremendous change in your in your mindset, you'll be more relaxed, more relieved, you will have less stress, or anytime you notice that the chatter in the head is beginning to pull you down, do a few rounds of deep breathing, Bhastrika Pranayama.
So remember to keep your spine upright and straight when you're doing it. And do it slowly. So it is slow, deep, rhythmic breathing as opposed to rapid, shallow, erratic breathing. All right, let's do the alternate nostril breathing. Anulom Vilom Pranayam. That helps to bring the balance between the left brain and the right brain. So you're going to lift your right arm and with your right hand thumb, you're going to press it on the side of your right nostril. You're going to close the right nasal passage with your right thumb. And then your middle finger, you can use your middle and ring finger down to close your left nostril. But first, after closing the right nostril, you're going to breathe in from the left nostril. And then bring your fingers down to close the left nostril and breathe out from the right nostril by lifting your right thumb. Then keeping the left nostril closed, you're going to breathe in from the right nostril. Close the right nostril with your right thumb. Let go of your fingers and breathe out from the left nostril again. So this is one round. So let's do a few rounds of alternate nostril breathing. Anulom Vilom Pranayam at our own pace. So you are breathing in through one nostril and breathing out through the other and then vice versa the reverse order. And we always start with the left nostril because that is the cooling nostril because it, it is connected to our ira channel. So there are different energy channels. Ira and pingala are the two major ones that run along the spine. And ira is considered the cooling cooling energy channel, whereas Pingala, the right one, which is connected to the right one, is considered the heating one. It's connected, it is uh, correlated with solar energy, and the left one, the ERA channel, is correlated with the lunar energy, with the moon. So because it's cooling, it's always safer to begin with the cooling side. So people who have high blood pressure, it helps to bring the blood pressure down. It also helps to bring anxiety down, stress level down, because what happens is that when we are under stress, our breath becomes shallow and erratic and unrhythmic. So it's, it has no rhythm. And then because of the chatter in the head or for whatever thoughts are going on, the anxiety can go up and the blood pressure shoots up. Your digestive process goes down. And you have uh, an imbalance of hormones in the system. So all you need to do is to take five minutes and sit down and just do anulom vilom pranayam. And then you can check your vitals again and see if it made any difference. And you will notice that when you do this Anulom Vilom Pranayam, it definitely, it will help you to lower your blood pressure. It calms the nerves. It will also help to improve digestion. 
because you're more relaxed. Here, the main element you're working on is called Vayu. And Vayu is one of the five elements that you're made of, which is earth, air. Air is Vayu. And Jal, water, and Prithvi, earth, and fire, and space. So, so fire, space, earth, water, and this is and, and space, fire, no, why air. So, air, space, earth, water, and fire. So what happens with Vayu? Vayu is imbalanced in the body. It can bring the imbalance between the left brain and the right brain. Now, so when you're done, you can bring your hand down. And it has an instant calming effect on our nervous system because our left brain is connected with our right nostril our right brain is connected to the left nostril. So it has an immediate calming effect and bringing the left brain and the right brain balance. So also, uh, you know, because of the imbalance, sometimes one can be more depressed or feeling down or low energy. And so whenever you're feeling that, do a few rounds of alternate nostril breathing and then see for yourself how it makes you feel. Very good. Let's do Brahmari Pranayam, which is another relaxing pranayam. It helps to massage our pineal gland, pituitary gland. And it's very, again, uh, helpful in improving sleep because again, it is helpful in releasing these uh, happy <coughs> hormones, releasing these um, more body-friendly hormones. So, for Brahmari Pranayam, the Bumblebee Pranayam, you're going to take both your hands and put your index finger on your forehead. Gently close your eyelids and put your middle finger over your eyelids. Put your ring finger above your upper lip and your little finger below your lower lip. Your thumbs are extended towards your ears. So before you plug your ears, we're going to take a deep breath in and then we'll make a humming sound like that of a bumblebee. We'll do it one time. So let's go ahead, take a deep breath in, plug your ear. And now we are going to do the full body relaxation for your Vidra. So let's go ahead and we're going to lie down. And now that your body is so relaxed, you're physically relaxed, you're mentally relaxed, so your parasympathetic system is active and you can feel that uh, because you're feeling a little cooler now, you might need to use a blanket or a jacket to cover yourself. Just lie down and just drop your feet down. Let there be distance between your arms and your body. Keep your hands facing up. And we mentally scan the body. Take a deep breath in and just take your attention to your feet. Wiggle your toes, wiggle, wiggle, move them in. And keep, keep doing your deep breathing. So, and you're going to curl your toes inward towards the heels and then relax your toes, stretching the balls of your feet outward and feel that stretch in your feet and let it go. Then you're going to press your kneecaps down, feel the tightness in both your legs again. Hold it tight, keep pressing the kneecaps down, feel the tightness and relax. And now pull your hips in, feel the tightness in the pelvic floor, hold it tight, 
and relax. Arch your back off the mat and then lower your back, pull your belly in as if you're waiting to exhale. Hold it tightly and let go. Clench your hands into tight yogic fists and press your arms down, pushing the hands down and your elbows down. So you're pressing the mat with both your fists and your elbows, feel the tightness in both your arms and let go, open your hands. And move your shoulders towards your ears and then drop it, relax, turn your head from side to side, right to left, left to right. And then you will do the same thing, just drop it and let go. Clench your, uh, now, Pull the facial muscles all in towards the center of the face as if you're frowning. And relax your facial muscles, raising your eyebrows towards your hairline. And relax. Open your mouth wide. Drop your lower jaw down. And let go. Curl your lips as if you're ready to whistle. And relax, stretch your lips from ear to ear, bringing a smile on your face. And slowly you can turn to your right side and just stay there for a few seconds. And when you're ready, you can sit up and you're ready to do the... Uh, the the dhyan meditation part, just sitting quietly with ourselves, with our breath. Feel that lightness that you're feeling when you're doing the yoga nidra. Notice your breath in and out. It is slow, it's steady. And it comes and goes. And just like the breath comes and goes, you might notice certain sensations in your body. And these sensations can be that of like itching or twitching sensation or a cooling sensation or a heating sensation. Whatever is the nature of the sensation, It comes and it goes. And just like the sensations come and go, feelings come and go. Feelings of anger or sadness or feelings of happiness, joy. And these feelings come and go. And just like the feelings come and go, there are thoughts that trigger those feelings and those thoughts also come and go. Mm -hmm. So no need to get too bogged down by certain thoughts or hold on to certain thoughts, especially if they're creating uh, some kind of turbulence in the mind. Remember that you are prior to your thoughts because you can observe your thoughts. You can witness your thoughts. So you are not a slave to your mind, but you are the master of your mind. So you decide which thoughts you want to entertain and which thoughts you don't want to entertain. So it is entirely up to you. So anytime you have thoughts of anxiety, of deadlines coming up, or some other um, projections about future or uncertainties about future, those are all thoughts, especially about the future. They are imaginary thoughts because it hasn't happened yet. So this is a projection into the future, imagination. No need to get upset by imagination. This is your own imagination. 
and you can change your imagination. You can trigger a different kind of imagination. Pleasant imagination, if that makes you feel better. The same way, sometimes our past can affect our present because we keep bringing our past into the present moment. And if that happens, especially if you're thinking of unpleasant thoughts or some regrets from the past or some resentment or some guilt, remember those are just thoughts. They come and go. It's entirely up to you which thoughts you can entertain or you want to entertain. Slowly, you will notice that there is less and less traffic in the head. There is lesser noise in the head and it's not so cluttered. And it will create this space of stillness and presence in between the thoughts. These gaps will begin to increase and you will notice this expanse of stillness and presence, which is always there as the backdrop of all of our thoughts and feelings and sensations and projections and worries and anxieties and imagination, regrets and anger or hurt, all of that, the drama of our lives is played on this backdrop of stillness and presence, which has no shape, no color, it's non-local, it just is. And it is always there, like the North Star, which is immovable, always there. So keep anchored to this North Star of your <coughs> presence, awareness. Slowly, we'll bring our hands together, rub our hands, feel the warmth in your hands, bring it over your head, and gently massage your facial muscles all over and massage your scalp, very good. I see you massaging your scalp, great. And your neck, top down and then bottom up and behind your neck, your upper back, right below your neck, the cervical leg, right? Feels so good. So wish you all a Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season and um, till next time, which is we are not meeting next Sunday, so uh, you have a break and then we will see you um, the Sunday after that. But eat wisely, move smart, breathe deep, sleep well, relax, meditate, stay healthy, stay safe. Bye, Abba. Thank you very much.